hello guys, I feel like I've run a million miles to make this interview possible. And finally, here with me, player, captain, caster, panelist, Kyle. Hi. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm not actually that good, but how are you? It's more important. I'm enjoying myself, I think. Uh, I really like Russia. I really like the fans here, the people. Um, food's got I me. Mean, I don't know. I, I'm a really easy person, I would say. Um, my base level is not necessarily happiness, but at least, you know, things are good. So I, if I have nothing to complain about, just have some fun. Uh, I know that you had a small chance to see Moscow yesterday. How it was? It was good. We watched uh, Infinity War, which was really cool because we had like a whole theater rented out for us by Epicenter. So we just like, and the theater had beer and it, we just hung out, it was, like 60 of us, you know, players, talent, watched the movie, went to see the Red Square, uh, saw the uh, cathedral, uh, some tanks on parade, you know, it was just a good time. And then we hung out in the lobby, just, you know, a little exploring. You told me that actually you're familiar with Russian culture and also read some Russian classic books. <laughs> I mean, I, a few, I mean, nothing, uh, I've wanted to read uh, more Dostoevsky because I've had some friends who read The Idiot and Brothers Karamazov and they were like, you know, these are worth, um, but I read some, uh, a lot of, a book of Chekhov short stories, A Day in the Life of Ivan Denishkovich, yes. I think is the name, it was like a, a book my grandmother gave me when I was like 13, 14 or something, so I had to read that too, but, you know, not as uh, cultured as, as I would hope, but I'd say in comparison to the average American, I'm doing okay. Yeah, really, not bad. Uh, I always wanted to know why are you always trying to simplify your nickname? Like from Swindle Melons to Swindles to Melons, and now I'm just Kyle. It's just easier. I like being Kyle. I also feel like it's a way for me to essentially state I'm just Kyle. Like, I don't see myself as some other person or gamer tag or anything special. It's just that I am who I am, and that the personality that I represent myself with is like actually me. It's not like a character. I don't want to be a character, I'm just Kyle. It's a good point. Uh, how did you actually get to this panel party and suddenly became kind of talent? I just asked. I was like, hey, can I do some events? And I've always been good at bullshitting. And apparently when you panel, you know, that's really important. So I'm very capable of talking and talking and talking about nothing, which is perfect. Essential exactly. thing for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, how was the whole event for you? Like, are you enjoying schedule? Are you getting tired? How it was? I'm definitely tired. I mean, we had like six hour, six days in a row where we were like the only panelists. So we were working three BO3s a day. Plus the shuttle time, Moscow traffic. There were like two days in a row we got back to the hotel after 1 a.m. It's like 12 hour days. So those were pretty rough. But outside of that, you know, it's okay. It is, once it's in the past, it's easy, you know. Uh, what's your favorite part in being uh, at the panel? Like, you can flame and other players because it's your job, not just the thing you want. How how it's going? Um, I mean, I I enjoy myself. I think of something that people don't realize, especially when you work with the same people every day, is part of your your bullshitting and banter is just to keep yourselves entertained because otherwise you just lose energy and you you you, you want to die. Let alone like be there in front of the camera, forced to have conversations. One of uh, Russian analysts told me that uh, there is actually an option to improve yourself as a player uh, when you work at panel. Like you are trying to analyze things you don't use to analyze and stuff like this. You agree? Yeah, yeah I agree. I think it's a reason to watch every game. So you can pick up on things that you hadn't noticed before. And it allows you just time to study the game for a reason and a lot of dota players have a hard time with practice and replay analysis because there's no purpose in a way um it's just to make yourself better but there's no there's no one testing you and there's no incentive necessarily other than the unknown amount of skill you'll increase because you've been studying whereas when you panel it's like okay if you watch the games closely you have good things to say and you immediately use them so it's like there's more of a i don't want to say a reward but it's just incentivized differently so I think it's easier to work hard because you have a real reason to, to know your shit immediately. Uh, do you think there is uh, an expired date for panelists? Uh, for example, uh, if a player finished his career like five years ago, is he still as effective as analyst like you, for example? I mean, I don't think anyone would be as effective as I am. 
I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it depends on how talented you are at uh, at talking and bullshitting, and then also. But you know, it's not just about talking, and it's also about your knowledge. Yes. I have an advantage. I've played every role. I've had to captain for a long time, and I've played so much Dota. I played Han beforehand. I have more broadcast experience because I did some of this in Han. I stream. I've streamed for quite some time, so it's kind of easy for me. And I think I'm also like more of a social person than most people in esports. It's really just you know, I this is what I do in my life. You know, at the events, I fuck off to the bar, have some drinks with people, talk about nothing. Like if you put me on camera, I can do the same. Well, about drinks and bars, uh, we already discussed it on the backstage uh, that your panel is kind of also a team. And yeah. it's, it's also it's supposed to uh, has a team have a team play, like a real Dota team. How do you guys make these team building things? Um, so I, you give some feedback, you learn what works with people and like it's it just takes practice, I think. It's the same way if you're hanging out with a group of friends, or like a girlfriend, parents even, like as your relationship builds, it becomes easier to talk. Um, it's a little different when you're on panel because you have to do it for a camera, so it needs to be easy to understand, and it's about Dota. But in general, I think it just gets better with time. Well, let's finish with some talent things discussion and talk about Dota and your game in Korea. Uh, we read a lot of blogs and tweets and stuff like this, but how was this this kick, kick situation from your angle, from your point of view? I don't really know. You'd have to ask my teammates. They didn't really tell me much. Yeah, but I mean how it was from your point of view, because you uh, know, you know, it, it's their version. What's your version? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have a version. You just look at I don't really want to add my opinion because I don't really believe in talking about uh, personal disagreements. You know, I don't believe in bad mouthing people, especially publicly. But obviously, there are going to be some disagreements and issues they have with me, just like I'll have issues with them. Um, all I would say is, you know, I don't. You make your own judgment, and just, you know, we'll see what happens from here. Yeah, but did you expect this? Maybe no. there, w maybe there was a moment when you're like, oh. I cross the line, something's gonna happen. Nope. I, I see a lot of things coming. I, this really surprised me, which is surprising to me because I don't get blindsided very often. Uh, what are your plans now? What are you gonna do next? Are you going to win the TI as a panelist or as a player? Uh, probably win three TIs and then start paneling. I think that's a good plan. Uh, but what, what about the nearest future? Oh well, yeah, as soon as possible. So you're gonna attend, probably you're gonna attend this uh, TI as player. I'm gonna try, probably. Uh, you've played with uh, players from different regions all the time. Some uh, Romanian mid players and stuff like this. Uh, have you thought about moving somewhere else by yourself? Maybe after TI, um, I've considered like Southeast Asia, Kiev. South America, like all of these cities that are obviously a lot cheaper to live in and a lot more suited to like what I like to do with my life. But it's a big commitment and I'm not sure. I'm just not sure, you know? It's hard for me to plan. I've been doing all these events. There's so much going on. I've been really lazy when it comes to like planning the future. I don't, I just kind of live it day by day and hope for the best. Well, but is your chance to say that you are open for some offers from CIS, for example. Well, I, mean, I think I've made that very clear. If anyone wants to give me a job, just hit me up. All right, DMs are open. Just let me know. Uh, I'll consult, cast, coach, criticize, captain, whatever you want. And that's just a letter C. All right, I can do anything as long as you pay me. Uh, how? You paid for this interview, right? It was uh, five thousand. Actually, you're not. You know, it's Russian man. You're not going to get paid for anything, even for your panel. <laughs> work. It's okay. They pay me. They, I get free vodka whenever I need. Okay. They have an IV in the talent room. And you just sit down. You like on camera and just. Yeah, and it's it is it enough for you as a payment? Yeah, easy. It's great. It's Russian. Of course it is. Great. Uh, how your daily routine has changed uh, since you're not player anymore? You don't have to play a lot of pub games. You don't have to practice. I don't get enough sleep. That's for sure, no matter what happens. But it's been nice that I just have more free time. Like I'm not really beholden to anybody. I'm living my own life. 
I don't have to worry about teammates or schedules. I just kind of hang out, and if I want to play Dota, I do. If I want to go somewhere with a friend, I can do that and get food. Like it's just easier because it's just me that I'm responsible for. Whereas previously, like other people's moods would have a direct impact on my life, my career, my success. So those team games. Indeed, I wish I was more talented. I would 100% just uh, maybe I'll be an artifact, uh, artifact player. That's the move. Never could have the StarCraft skill, you know, but artifact, card game or my speed. I'm old. Uh, and my last question is uh, based on your description on Twitter. Uh, hell is where the man you are meet the man you could have been. Uh, what is the heaven then? Um... I, got, I mean, all I, can, all I know how to do when I speak about philosophy is talk in quotes. And there's this really good line that uh, a man dies two deaths, once when he uh, breathes his last breath, and another when his name is remembered for the last time, or he is remembered for the last time. And I would say heaven um, would be to know that you're never going to die. Wow. That's impressive No, to finish our interview. Um, anything you want to add? Um, no, just thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Marie, for having me on and doing this interview. Um, and shout out to Epicenter for allowing me an opportunity to continue to be a part of the Dota scene in some small way and just get a great opportunity to hang out with a bunch of Russians at the bar. <laughs> and for three free vodkas anytime you want. Three free vodkas? Yeah, oh, you yeah, 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 of course. I'm not paying, I'm American. Come on. Thank you for the interview. Thank you very much. And thank you guys for watching.